Hey everybody, hope that you're doing well, having a great day, uh, that the week's going well, and uh, these are good for you. We are in Proverbs chapter 18, and we're going to look again at a few verses. We are going to start off with verse 2, which says, A fool, and it is kind of repetitive, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Have you ever been there? Hey, have you ever had someone who they just want to express their opinion? They just want to tell you what they think or what they think they know, but they don't want to listen to sound wisdom. They don't want to hear what someone else has to say. They're just quick to point out what they believe is true. And, and we've seen that so much, haven't we, in our world that we're in right now, that the left wants to pound you, the right wants to pound you, and no one, no one will listen to one another. We just want to state our opinion and say, well, my opinion is going to be right. I don't care what anyone else says. And that's part of the problem that I believe we have in our country, actually in our world right now. But that's a whole nother one. In verses 6 and 7, they flow together. A fool's lips walk into a fight, and his mouth invites a beating. How's that? A fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are a sneer to his soul, which really goes back to what we saw in verse 2, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but they just want to voice their opinion. A fool's lips walk into a fight. You just keep on talking. Yep, 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 yep. And you just keep on going, and it leads to a fight. Not necessarily a physical fight, but an argument. A total disagreement, just a knockdown, drag out, social media type of a fight that we see. And it's like, why? Why? Why, why can't people just be quiet? If you don't have something good to say, just don't say it. It seems simple, doesn't it? Or maybe I'm just off. Maybe we should just all be arguing all the time. But that doesn't seem the way of Christ, does it? I'm going to jump to 24, then back to 10. Uh, in verse 24, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, which goes back to what we saw yesterday in 1717, which says a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. So that's a reminder. We need to have that person who's close to us, who sticks to us. They can be closer than a brother or a sister when we have that great, great friend who can go through life with us, journeys through it. And in verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. I love that. I love the name of the Lord, the power of the Lord. The, just to say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And what do you do? You run into it. You don't walk. I'll take my time. No, man, you run and you get into that tower because that is God's refuge. That is his strength. That is his protection. That is his grace, his mercy, his encouragement, all that he can give to us. It's, it's like that little child who calls out for mom or dad when they skin their knee or when they're afraid of the thunder and lightning and they call out to them and mom and dad or whoever it is comes and wraps their arms around them and holds them and hugs them and helps them to know that you are safe. That's the image I have. That's the strong tower, the power <laughs> that, <laughs> excuse me, that power that God offers us. Run to it. Don't wait. Don't walk. Don't say tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. Run to God's protection, to his grace. He'll always be there for you. Have a great day. God bless you. See you later.